Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? OK, excellent. So first of all, I couldn't have asked for a better, better person to go ahead of me, because I think he set the stage with the opportunity Gen AI provides. I'm going to change the, the tone of the discussion and say the problems Gen AI creates, because like Abhijit said, us semiconductor people sit right at the bottom and look up. And um, Abhiji still sits above me, from what I can tell, because I am like the IP and the and and just the just just the basic beginning of how technology can be used to create all that opportunity. You see that. So so first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm I'm thrilled to be here, and hopefully, uh, what you're gonna get from 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 just a few slides I'm gonna share and and what you're gonna hear from me over the next 10-15 minutes is just a sense of of the excitement and the opportunity Gen AI provides from an investment perspective. Um, when, when Faisal mentioned that I could uh, potentially talk here, I was like, I'm going to be pitching to a bunch of investors all at the same time. That's, that's a great opportunity. And instead of pitching MIPS, which I'm happy to do later, but bottom line is um, I'm pitching the need for the investment community to wake up to the reality that Gen AI is going to need semiconductor investment. And I think that's my goal. And it starts with IP, but honestly, it is every aspect of the semiconductor supply chain, which probably needs um, more investment to get to where it needs to be. All right. So, so Abhijit sort of showed um, one symbol which you're going to see here. Um, he showed a few question marks. And honestly, that's where we are on Gen AI. Because for the first time in almost three decades, um, the roles have sort of re reversed. And let me explain. Back in the 1990s, as the PCs came out, hardware sort of led, and then the applications caught up, which then again propagated hardware innovation further. So the integrated circuit was created in, in, in TI many, many years back. That started, then you came out with operating systems, applications, and we all kind of know what happened then. Fast forward another decade, in the 2000s, you already had technology which would allow Apple to go create the smartphone. They made it much better, and then the App Store happened. And it drove significantly more innovation, and obviously I'm, I'm in San Diego, so goes without saying. But bottom line is, there was hardware which allowed applications to, to, to move further. Today, the situation is different. There is Gen AI. And with all due respect to Jensen and NVIDIA, I don't think there is the perfect platform um, from a hardware perspective. And all that potential which, which Abhijit uh, so nicely put in terms of Gen AI is going to be fundamentally limited just from a power consumption perspective, just from a capability perspective. For the first time, applications are running so far ahead of what hardware can do. Um, it is both a huge problem, but also a huge opportunity for us to invest and rethink. And the solutions aren't going to be quantum and all of that, because that takes a lot of time. Gen AI, like if chat GPT, I don't know, 6 really does pass the bar exam, we're going to start having significant issues in terms of just power availability across the planet. The other thing is, every time technology innovation has happened, it always starts with with the people who can afford the technology. For a change, if we really want to make the promise of AI go global, we've got to also think affordability and how do we scale that technology across the planet. And therein lies the other opportunity. So first and foremost, if we just continue down the path we are going, we are, hardware folks, semiconductor folks, are going to start limiting the rate at which Gen AI uh, truly grows which is a problem and an opportunity. So, so why is there the challenge? So, so Vijit mentioned the Moore's Law briefly. And honestly, semiconductor people have had it easy for a very long time. Um, just by technology scaling, just by Moore's Law, things got faster, things got cheaper, things got easier. But unfortunately, that's coming to an end. In some ways, it's already ended. Whether it's ended, not ended, that's a debate which doesn't get you anywhere. It definitely has slowed down. So all of a sudden, you're facing a situation which, for everyone, including me, who've grown up understanding the benefit of Moore's Law and designing with it and building businesses on the, on the back of Moore's Law, 
all of a sudden you have to go back to uh, basic first principle thinking and saying, how are we going to solve this problem? Because if we don't, that gap in terms of what semiconductors can do and what the demand is, is just widening. And honestly, nobody can articulate that gap exactly because it changes. It changes every time there's a new application. Um, the reason you see the, 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 the situation in, in the market with NVIDIA as well is fundamentally limited because honestly, the entire world thinks that's the only solution. And today, it probably is the best solution. But it's not a solution grounds up designed with AI in mind. And it's going to take us something other than Moore's law to be able to go back and say, how are we going to go start attacking that problem? So it starts by, first of all, splitting the compute problem. The compute problem is not a homogeneous problem. It's a heterogeneous problem. What it means is, to do Gen AI better, there are different compute loads needed versus anything which is a homogeneous, like a PC or a mobile phone. You need a combination of heterogeneous elements, and ultimately, it's about compute density. So if you're just trying to linearly scale semiconductors, that's going to start limiting your performance. So what you're starting to look at is what we call chiplets, where with chiplets, you're starting to increase compute density in a significant manner. So what it starts is, we're starting to look at situations where you start with a simple core, which is what most people are very familiar with. If you go from core to cluster to chiplets. And the answer is, um, this is, this is what takes Moore's law further. So you're still leveraging Moore's law in each of those elements, but the density increases by putting many of them together. And, I, and honestly, as we in the IP world start defining our IP, what we are trying to get together and figure out is, how do we make that happen? Where you go from core to clusters to many clusters. The other thing which needs to change is the problem we're trying to solve. So from 2005 to 2025, the problem was different. The problem was focused on mobile and connectivity. That's a very different problem. So when you thought about how do I define my next processor, what does it need to do? It needs to do a better screen, it needs to move faster, it needs to run more applications, it needs to be battery operated. So that was a very different design fundamental as you started solving that problem from a semiconductor perspective. With Gen AI, that has now evolved. You're starting to look at data. And it's a very, very different approach um, versus looking at it from a mobile perspective. Because now when you're looking at data, your power consumption on data reduces if you reduce data movement. So what you used to do on applications, what you used to do on connectivity, what you used to do to get a better 1080p screen or a 4K screen has to shift. So fundamentally, the problems and the players who have solved those problems may or may not be the same players solving the data problem. When it comes to data, you're starting to do data processing, you're starting to do data movement, and power saving comes by reducing that data movement and you're starting to work on interconnects, whether it is die-to-die -die interconnect, whether it is chiplet interconnect. So from an investment perspective, we're seeing a shift from investment dollars on application-oriented mobile processors to data-oriented Gen AI processors. So bottom line is, for us to go build the, the right compute solutions from a Gen AI perspective, the focus has to be on data processing, the focus has to be on integration through chiplets uh, beyond Moore's law. And the focus has to be on application-specific processing. Because the general purpose processing era is behind us. Um, and the more application focus we get, the better that data processing and the better that solution is going to be. So all in all, in summary, what I'll say is, for us to be able to deliver on the promise of Gen AI, Investment in semiconductor has to shift from where it is to more data processing oriented. It needs to increase, else for the first time in 30 years, semiconductors won't be able to fulfill and will become a barrier to progress on Gen AI. Thank you very much.